Just a few seconds. Well, good morning again. My name is Winston LeBay. I am the uh, lead lender relations specialist with the United States Small Business Administration. Thank you so much for coming out this morning. Uh, I joined the SBA in May 2020. Prior to that, I was a commercial lender here in Houston and a, a SBA lender, banker, if you will. Graduate of Texas Southern University, also an Army veteran, and I'm a graduate of HCC. I want to make sure I mention that. So I did receive my associate's degree in real estate from Houston Community College. Give Houston Community College a hand. I'm a proud HCC graduate, actually, so thank you so much for that. So with that, I am going to introduce our panel. I have a, some questions I'll ask them, and then think of questions you may have as well. But before I introduce the panel, if you could, just so we'll know the makeup of the audience, how many of you, by raising your hand, own a small business? If you raise your hand, you own a small business? Oh, wonderful. So that's going to help me tremendously with these questions, right? And how many of you uh, plan to start a business? If you raise your hand, how many of you plan or want or dream of starting a business? Raise your hand. Good deal. All right. So with that, before I introduce our panel, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my colleague who's going to retire on June 30th, Easter Wright, who's at the table over towards my right. Raise your hand, Easter. She's been with the SBA 33 years, and her last day with us is June 30th. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your service. And she's a military veteran, Army veteran as well. So with that, let's get started. First, let me introduce our panel, and then we'll start the questions. And if you have any questions, we're going to do things slightly differently. If you have any questions, then just get the attention of Brian. Uh, he has the microphone. He's raising his hand. And uh, if I see Brian standing next to a table, I will pause between the questions and then allow you to ask that question. We'll do it that way as well, okay? Good deal. All right, so this morning we have LaVera Smith in the middle there. Uh, LaVera is a senior business advisor with the U of H, that's University of Houston, Bauer College Small Business Development Center, known as SBDC. So you hear me say SBDC quite often this morning. Uh, she brings more than 24 years of banking experience to the U of H Bauer College and her career with the SBDC has helped hundreds, hundreds of small business owners start and grow their businesses. So thank you so much, LaVera. And LaVera and I go way thank back. You. I won't say how long because sometimes people are sensitive to me <laughs> saying that. So, but uh, we, were, we go way back. So thank you, LaVera. Uh, next is David Baker, who's sitting to my right. Uh, David Baker has over 12 years of SBA lending experience working with a variety of industries and projects involving acquisitions, real estate transactions, construction, equipment purchases, etc. As a lender with Guarantee Bank's SBA department, he works with the SBA 7A, 7A 504 International Trade, Export, and USDA loan program. So you may want to ask him what that is, USDA. So that's a question you may want to ask, okay? All right. And he is a proud, let me see, he's a very proud, I put in very, he's a very proud fighting Texas Aggie he holds a bachelor's degree and an MBA from Texas A&M, and prior to his banking career, he served as an infantry officer in the Army. Thank you so much, David, for your service. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, last but not least, my colleague and good friend, Bobby Bilberry, is a fourth-generation Texan who was raised in West Texas and graduated from Texas Tech University with the bachelor's in finance. You guys don't compete. Texas Tech, and you guys are good, right? No competition. Okay, okay, good. All right. All right. Uh, he has over 34 years of experience as a lender, working in financial analyst, uh, personal lending, commercial lending, loan review, and more. He joined the SBA prior to me joining the SBA in November 2019. And he helps, well, as a lender, lender relations specialist, he helps area lenders with any of their issues with any of the SBA lending programs. So thank you so much, Bobby. Wonderful guy. Thank you, Bobby, for everything you do. He's my, my right hand. He really is my right hand guy. So we'll start with the questions. And again, if you have any, get Brian's attention. So we'll start with LaVera. So there are so many small businesses in the audience, and I'm so excited that you raise your hand. All right. So LaVera, someone may be thinking, what is the SBDC? What does the Small Business Development Center do? And how can they help a business owner, not just starting a business, but say someone that's already in business? First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to be on this panel, and thank you to the governor's office, office for the invitation as well. So the SBDC is a, national, a nationwide organization 
We've been around for 43 years, and what we do or what we provide is business consulting and training to entrepreneurs and small businesses, whether you are in the early stages or pre-venture stage of starting a business, or you in the early stages of opening and, and growing your business, or you may be in the growth stage of your business. So we support you through the services that we offer. And our services are three core services, primarily, that we offer. One is no-cost business advising services. So what that means that, you know, if you have an idea, if you have a business and you're struggling in your business, or are you trying to figure out, you know, ways to grow your business or, you know, figure out what may be hindering you from, you know, growing and starting your business, then you have support there. We're here to help you kind of navigate through the complexities of starting your business, growing your business, and, you know, whatever pitfalls or issues that you may incur as a small business owner, because we know that it's not always smooth sailing in running and operating a business. Uh, we also offer access to information or education. Um, as part of being, you know, hosted by the University of Houston, Bar College of Business, um, one of the things that we do is try to educate our small business owners on how to go about starting a business, growing a business. So we offer a plethora of educational workshops and seminars, many of which that you can find online on our website, which are at no cost. Uh, we also offer some in-person classes. Uh, I represent the region office of the Texas Gulf Coast Network. We are located in the Galleria area. So we have a full service training facility that we uh, offer in person, you know, uh, classes and workshops to help support you again through, you know, the uh, topics that we think are, you know, important to small businesses to help them start and grow. And thirdly, we offer access to information. So we have a full service uh, library, a resource center that we can help you explore, you know, opportunities out there to do some market research on your industry, trends, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the three core services that the SBDC offers. And, you know, like I said, one of the things that we help our clients with is just being that support for you to help mentor you, to help guide you through the process of whatever you may be facing in terms of your business. So I have a question, Lavera. Uh, you may have already said this, so please forgive me. How does someone uh, contact the SBDC to schedule uh, an appointment? Well, it's very, very easy since everything is sort of online. So you can go to our website at www.sbdc.uh.edu, and we have an online registration um, format that you can follow. So it's very easy, it's very simple. So when you go there, you just you know put in your email address. It will take you to a link to register uh, for business advising services. We have 14 centers. Um, as I mentioned, I'm representing the regional office, which is located in the Galleria. But we do have a location here that service the Woodlands area. That is Sam Houston State University, SBDC. Uh, center, which you heard earlier, um, was talked about previously um, by the other panel. So no matter where you're located, here in Southeast Texas, there is a center near you. If you're not here in Southeast Texas, we are broken down into regions. So there are four regions within the Texas area. So we have um, you know, West Texas, that's hosted by Texas Tech University. We have um, Dallas, um, Texas, well, Dallas um, SBDC Center, which is hosted by our community college. And then we have, what am I missing? Um, oh, man. That's good. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a chance to pause. Well, you pause. All right. So th <laughs> thank you. I don't think I have any more questions. For that was like, what, 15 minutes? Oh, I'm just joking. All right. So my next question is for Bobby. Hey, Bobby, if you could. Uh, I, I mentioned SBA lending, and you're with the SBA, and so and, and David Baker's an SBA lender. But for those in the audience who may not know what the SBA does, if you could speak, uh, and you don't have to get too deep in the weeds, but if you could speak to the SBA, uh, primarily the SBA 7A loan program, and how does that benefit a small business owner, the SBA 7A lending program? That's for you, Bobby. For me? Yeah. Bobby. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't. 
Um, so the, the 7A program with SBA is a loan program that you can loan up to $5 million to small businesses. The loan program is where the lender, the approved SBA lender, uh, funds the note, books the note, services the note. That's the primary contact for that borrower. And the SBA guarantees a portion of that note for that borrower to incentivize the, the lender to do the loan. You contact lenders. Uh, there are a list of on, our, on our website of approved SBA lenders. There's also reports that show what lenders are doing, what loans in our district area that you can look up and tell who are the most active lenders in the area that are doing most of the SBA loans. So it's a good source. Uh, those reports are at the bottom of our website, uh, www.sba.gov forward slash TX forward slash Houston www.sba.gov forward slash TX forward slash Houston. So that's our website. You can go to that and um, get that list of lenders, but you can also get the list of lenders, uh, the activity reports that show what lenders are doing what reports or what loans, excuse me. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate it. The other day I was on a webinar, actually yesterday, and uh, I mentioned personal credit and then someone typed in the Q&A why would they need, or why would the lender focus on their personal credit when it's a loan to the business? So David, if you could speak to why is someone's personal credit important when the bank is underwriting or analyzing a loan request, a personal yeah. credit? Uh, yeah, thank you, it's a very good question. And it, I, I think it's important to maybe elaborate a little bit in terms of um, you know, what are the factors that bankers look at in considering any loan request, regardless if it's conventional lending or SBA lending. And one of the things that bankers always talk about are the, the standards of the five C's of credit. And uh, uh, you know, one of those, the first one we like to think about is character. The five C's include character, uh, capacity, uh, collateral, um, capital, and then conditions. And uh, one of the primary ones that you begin with is character. And the best quantifiable way that a banker can assess someone's character when it comes to um, deciding whether or not you know, they are a viable candidate for, for lending money to is, is what their track record is in paying their debts. And the way you can find that is obviously in, in someone's credit score. And so we always kind of lead with that as a major factor in, in starting a conversation is making sure that people understand the importance of what what impact their credit score has. And, and that can be a range, and, it, and the beauty of SBA lending, I always like to think, is that it, it allows uh, small businesses the opportunity to have a conversation uh, and, and um, discuss what issues they might be faced with that, that precludes them or, or you know, necessitates them to be going the SBA route. Thank you, thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. Lavera, I said I wouldn't ask you a question again, but I am. So uh, this question is for you, Lavera. Uh, what are some preliminary steps a business owner should take before they approach a lender regarding accessing capital or applying for a loan? Preliminary steps, in your opinion, for, and from in your experience, opinion. and from your experience. <laughs> <laughs> so in my opinion, and based on my time you know, in banking, as well as my time with the SVDC, I think one of the one of the most important steps is to know what business that you're going to first want to go into or start. Um, followed by, you know, understanding how much money you need to start the business. A lot of times, you know, what I've seen in the past in my career at the SVDC is that many of my clients that I, you know, counsel with they already started their business and they figure out early on that they are short of capital. And when I ask them, okay, what did you do to prepare? How much did you, you know, figure out that you need it? They didn't do any preparation. They just kind of started and figured they, they could wing it. But uh, I would say that, you know, understanding and knowing what your startup cost is gonna be, how much working capital that you would need to put forth uh, and that business is first and foremost, if you don't do anything else, at least figure that out and then figure out, you know, um, how much money you're gonna make and what expenses that you're gonna incur as a result of starting the business. And then lastly is the business planning process. 
you probably hear that a lot from you know banks and you know your lenders that says okay you need a business plan but it's not only a, a, a tool to help them evaluate um, your business ideal or concept but it's also your roadmap into you you know understanding how you're going to run and operate the business so I think those three key yep. things are very important and I want to elaborate back on credit uh, for a minute since uh, you were the SBDC. So let's say if someone's credit, and I'll use a word that I've heard a, a friend say, is bruised, right? They have some you know, issues, if you will. Uh, are there any sources out there or, or ways that they can, uh, technical assistance that's out there to help small businesses that may have uh, some credit issues, maybe, not, maybe minor credit issues? I mean, there's always, you know, um, organizations and resources out there to help small businesses with their credit. But as a former banker, I would say that, you know, sometimes it just takes a little time and you doing the steps to correct some of the credit concerns or issues that may be affecting your access to credit. And, you know, at the SBDC, we can certainly help you with that. We have you know, a lot of former bankers, <laughs> recovering bankers, that um, are advisors at the SBDC. And we know a little thing or two about, you know, helping our clients with understanding, you know, how to review their credit report, how to correct some of the credit issues. I would say to do that first before you venture out and, you know, decide to pay someone, for example, to fix your credit, because that's only a temporary fix. Uh, it is not the, sol the solution um, to your problem to access credit because, again, as uh, David correct, stated, it's like your personal credit is very important and how you repay uh, your debts is part of the character that they're looking at in terms of determining whether or not they want to send that credit to you. So it's kind of, um, you know, taking the time to do the right thing and make it happen. Thank you, LaVera. I want to go back to you, David, on that. Not credit, but just it makes me think about relationships. And a lot of times, how many of you, if you raise your hand, have you ever heard or attended a webinar or in-person event and you heard someone say relationships are important as far as developing a relationship, business relationship, not personal, with a banker? Have you ever heard that phrase? Raise your hand. Okay, good deal. I'm glad, I'm glad you raised your hand. So, uh, David, could you speak to that? I mean, how important, and I was a lender for 25 years, how important is it for a small business to try to establish, uh, you know, like a business relation or rapport with the uh, lending institution or the lender? Does that help at all? Yeah, no, I, uh, absolutely. I think that it's, it's a critical component that most banks will communicate that um, we don't see ourselves and our institution and our industry as being transactional. We're not interested, most banks are not interested in single off transactions. That's not how this, the, the business model works. Our business model as a bank um, is uh, based off of a, a longer term relationship with our clientele. Um, and it's an expanded relationship. So it's not just the actual financing portion, you know, banks have lots of you know product lines that they want to be able to market and serve uh, the, the, the commercial community uh, that they um, that they deal with um, it's extremely important from a small business standpoint uh, I always say to establish that relationship early on you know when when you're talking about forming your business and people say well you know you need to get an attorney you need to get a CPA on board early on to talk through okay you know strategy and plan for for where you're wanting to take it. I always add, you need to get a banker. It, there's nothing wrong with getting a banker involved early on. Um, you know, part of my charge as a, an SBA lender, and this is a real privilege, is that I get to work with small business owners um, at, at, different, at many different stages of the process. And it's always better if I can be involved early on so that I can kind of tip you off on, well, here's the perspective of what you're gonna need, where you're gonna need to be at, what we're gonna need to see as a banker because at some point you're gonna to need to have capital and, and, and be able to finance that. And so if you can get a banker involved early, they can give you some great advice in terms of strategizing how, how, you, how you can take that, that, those steps necessary to be at that point. That's a great answer, David. Thank you so very much, I appreciate it. Don't forget, uh, if you have questions, try to get Brian's attention. He's right in the back, he needs to do some exercising, so raise your hand, get his attention. Winston, if I could just. Go ahead. 
piggyback on what David said, sure. just remember, as an entrepreneur, when you go to that lender, that guy needs to be, or that person needs to be somebody that you're able to work with. Because basically, that relationship is a partnership. Because when you do a deal, usually even if a bank asks you for a 20% equity injection in the deal for the total, that means your bank has put in 80% of the deal. So they're a partner. So you have to be able to work with them through the deal. So you need to pick a bank that you can work with because they're a partner. And usually they're a long-term partner and they want you, they certainly want you to succeed to get bigger and grow. So have a great relationship with your bank. That's the best advice I can tell you. If you do, you will go really, really far because that bank can, will help you as much as they can. And I want to piggyback off of what, and I know there's a question, but when I was in banking, uh, someone asked me this morning, uh, you know, what bank did I work at? And I said, well, what bank didn't I work at? So I worked at different banks, right? But, uh, but I have small businesses that I finance or that I was the relationship manager on. And when I made a move, they followed me because we had that relationship. They felt comfortable because they knew that I was going to fight for that, I say fight for the deal, but really try to help them get that deal through. So relationships are very important. And to this day, I started my banking career in 1994. I don't mind telling you, 1994. And I still have uh, conversations with some of my small business cu uh, customers who are friends now. So uh, relationships are very important. But Brian, you have someone back here in the back. Hi, my name is Debbie. One banker's great, but two is better. <laughs> Give me a positive because a lot of people close themselves off with only using doing bank with, with one bank, and that's not always a positive thing in a world of small businesses. So, is your question is a good? My question is, oh. what's oh. it's better for two bankers because just like a financial officer, both of them have your interest in heart, and they work harder when your money's not all at one bank. Okay. Yep. David, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I, I, I try to mentor and coach my clientele is th to recognize that, um, you know, you need to have some, some diverse opportunities in terms of where you're seeking, in this specific case, uh, financing and capital. And, and, you know, all banks have different appetites. All banks have certain strengths and, and limitations that they can, of things they can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's important to make sure that you are responsible for your own um, uh, team that you assemble, which includes some diverse, you know, e equity partnerships, and that could be, you know, multiple bankers, you know, uh, uh, multiple, in, you know, uh, equity partnerships that you might, you know, of other avenues as well. So it's absolutely important, uh, uh, you know, from a practical standpoint. And I, I never mind telling my my potential prospect customers this is. Um, Absolutely, be sure you're shopping your loans. Um, it, it's, it would be uh, negligible for a business owner to have all of their eggs in one basket with the expectation that, hey, my lender, I'm gonna go through this whole process um, and recognize this, that the SBA you know, is a government program, and so there's some bureaucracies which equates to time in getting these things processed. Um, and it, it's unfortunate if you as a business owner are not thinking about backup options from a financing standpoint, and that you you could find yourself going down a you know a, a three month process only to find that hey you know there are certain limitations or or the appetites change or the you know winds of the market change, and so you need to have some backup options that you'd be able to uh, do. The other thing is there's different tiers of banking, you know you know where you might have the convenience of some. Uh, nationwide capabilities that you need to be able to access certain clientele, be it overseas clients or, or something like that, that those banks might be able to have some strengths in. But your local community bank could be a, a better resource for seeking, you know, creative financing options for you. So those are ways of, of dealing with different tiers of banking relationships. Thank you, David. And, and I want to jump in on that, too. Uh, when you do talk to a bank, and one of my questions for the panel, but we may not have time, was about transparency, and I mentioned, mentioned relationships. But when you, uh, you, know, you approach the bank, you, know, you meet with the lender, first of all, make sure you're speaking with the right person, the one that makes decisions, the commercial lender or SBA banker, uh, because a lot of times when I worked at the big banks, uh, 
you walk into a branch and you say, I want to apply for a business loan, they introduce you to, I hope there are not any personal bankers in here, but uh, a personal banker, their specialty is more like the consumer lending, so forth. But make sure you talk to the right person and then ask that question, does that bank or that credit union or that fintech, uh, do they provide financing for your industry, right? If it's a startup, you want to know that on the front end because if they tell you no on the front end, then you go somewhere else versus applying with the loan, I mean applying for, for your loan and pull your credit. And now you have all your credit pulled at all these different banks. But go ahead, Brian, you have a person. Yes, uh, my name is Art Smith and um, I'm here um, from a st startup standpoint and my wife is the CEO of uh, Art's Teeth Brush and the world's first teeth brush. So it's the first time you've ever seen a teeth brush that is double-sided, but it was um, approved by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in April of 2020, then the pandemic hit. But what I like to ask the question about is, I know that you say a lot of the, the, um, the funding has to do with the character, dealing with the uh, credit score and stuff like that. With so many Americans being in debt, do y'all have any success stories that you've taken a chance outside of the normal risk factors and have a success story without it just being said, oh, your credit score is this, this represents your character, turn around, leave out the door, we can't help you get back with us after you go through all of these different steps. Do y'all have, as bankers, do y'all have any that you say, well, we're going to take a chance on this person and they end up being successful on a global scale? And before we answer the question, uh, because I'm going to ask not only David, but Lavera, you could think, maybe think about clients that you've helped, uh, if, and if, if any come to mind, but you don't have to say their names, right? But if you want to, to speak to that question, does anyone have any? Yeah, so you bring up an a, a important point about um, really I think it touches on what the whole mission of the SBA program is. And you know, it, uh, I'll quickly give Banking 101. There's two primary ways of accessing bank, traditional financing through banks. Number one, conventional lending. And number two, SBA, or Government Guaranteed Lending. And what this program does is it basically says, hey, we open that credit box up to incentivize banks in some way to be able to um, uh, open the opportunities up to, for small businesses to access actual real bank loans. You don't get the money from the SBA, you get it from the bank. And the way they do that is, um, uh, we've explained is, th these are government guaranteed loans. So, so essentially between anywhere from 75 to 90% of the loan based on the different programs that the SBA provides is, is backed by the federal government. So you can imagine that takes a big, uh, that's a major factor in risk mitigation on these deals. Um, Conventional loans, and, and I know there's some conventional lenders out there, so I, I won't disparage conventional lending, but conventional lending is, is collateral-based to a great extent, either collateral or established cash flow basis. Because, you know, at that point, that tier is, there's, you know, different um, um, uh, risk-mitigating factors because there's no guarantees on it. Um, one of the things I like to talk about with um, SBA lending is it's a it's a program that gets you introduced to traditional financing, and then the, our 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 intent is to graduate you to becoming a conventional candidate. Um, now, that's the backstory to you know a, a critical point you bring up is there are some you know harsh realities um, of standards that have to be met um, that um, no matter what kind of guarantee on there, it's, it's hard to mitigate. Um, excessive debt is, a, is an absolute problem uh, that unfortunately it, it um, paralyzes a lot of small businesses from being able to expand, to grow. And what we refer to that as becoming over leveraged. And um, you know, while on the one hand, a low credit score can be mitigated. I can have a borrower, you know, typically uh, 650 is a pretty standard minimum that uh, a credit score that most banks like to see. Plenty of borrowers of mine have been under 650, and that's totally fine, as long as we understand what the issues are. And, and, and unfortunately, the credit bureaus that, that track your numbers don't necessarily get it always right. And, and if we can understand what it is, oh, then we can mitigate that. We can say we can explain it. Um, I like to tell people that the, the benefit, the beauty of this program is it means that my borrowers, I get to listen to their stories. 
They don't have to fit into a, a very defined cookie cutter definition of what meets our lending standard. The, with a guarantee, it says, oh, I can actually listen to the story. We can do startups. It doesn't have to have you know, existing cash flows. We can do things where you know, a borrower's credit score is in repair, but, we're, but he's showing or they're showing how that thing is actually getting up there. That's great. Thank you. Good. Did you have another question? That was it? Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I, I like to see in the near future at some particular time that when uh, events like this and summits like this are set up that we can really get a chance to see that y'all took a chance on someone and show some success stories, man. We, I mean, we can talk all the time about that perfect person that come in, but I would love to see banks, the banking, the SBAs, the schools. I'm a 2019, my son, he was at Texas Southern University. So it encouraged me to go back to HCC. Mm -hmm. I just graduated in 2019. I'm 54, so that ain't too long ago, but my son encouraged me to go back to school. And, um, but at the same time, I would just love to see more uh, success stories being promoted that didn't have that perfect picture. Thank you. That's a great point, and, and I'll say this, and I think we only have a minute or two left. Um, I thought you were clapping for me, but I guess not, right? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now, I was going to say a couple of things. One is the SBA, we do periodically uh, highlight success stories uh, online on our website, and we used to have an actual paper resource guide, but everything is pretty much... Uh, digital. So I would ask you, and I'll give you my business card before I leave, where you can check that out. But the other thing you made me think of is monthly, monthly, and sometimes twice a month, we schedule events, uh, lead the, meet the lender and lender matchmaking events at the Houston Community Colleges across this city, right? And we invite 17, 18 lenders. They sit in a room like this. Each one has a table. We invite the public. We usually have about 75 small businesses that show up. And it's like I liken it to like speed dating. You know, you spend you know 20 minutes at a time at each table, but you get a chance to talk to different lenders. You, you the small business owner, fill out a profile sheet. What's your credit score? What is the industry? Is it a startup? And then we have the lender's profile, and we match you that way. So I would encourage you, the guy that was speaking earlier, make sure you uh, take a look at our website, sign up for the emails because that's how you find out about all these events. But I do appreciate your your comment. And one other thing that you mentioned, uh, credit. There are three other uh, lenders, uh, micro lenders, like uh, People Fund, Lift Fund, and The Alliance. I know for a fact that their credit score requirements like 590, they'll go that low, 590, and in some cases, lower than that. So uh, there are resources out there as well for small businesses. Uh, Brian, is that, is that it? One shot. That's it. Okay, I can't tell what you're saying. You're saying zero? Oh, one, one question? More. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, what we're doing. Please, I know that the SBA, and the Exim Bank, the SBDCs, we've been talking about one key area has been exporting. And uh, um, I'm here because that's my interest. But I find some problems, and the problem is I'd like to ask it as a question quickly. Uh, U.S. elected just take Texas manufacturer, uh, manufacturers, are they really willing to export? Are they willing, despite the um, Exim Bank programs, are they willing to export? And I'm saying this because of the next question. Most exports today from Texas goes to the developed countries in large volumes. But you have 55 countries in sub-Saharan Africa that seems to be of no consequence. I want to know what's the way forward. And uh, I'll just jump in, and, and then David, I know you guys do that. But we have the export. Well, the SBA has an export working capital program, and then there's the international trade program. Uh, we have a, a person on staff that she specializes in that area. So what I would encourage you to do is let's meet after this session because we can have a more detailed conversation about the export working capital program and the international trade program, because I would be doing you a disservice if I just try to give you a quick answer, okay? Is that okay with you? Good. Any more questions? That's it? All right. Hey, thank you. Well, I'm not sure he had his hand. 
But anyway, okay, well, I tell you, if you have a question, just come visit with us. We're, we'll be here for a while. Thank you so much. Thank our panelists. Appreciate you guys. Wonderful job. Thank you. And, uh, thank you.